in this demo, uh, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to create a custom list uh, and then a lookup column that will store as a site column and then use that site column over and over again to display values from that lookup list without having to reconfigure it. So adding it to the content type and making it easy to deploy. So we'll do all of that in the browser. So I'm just going to launch the browser and we'll go to our SharePoint site. Once our SharePoint site comes up here, we'll go into the uh, site actions menu and create a new custom list. Okay, here we are. So in the site actions menu, I'm going to choose more options. And in more options, I'm going to filter by list. I'm going to choose custom list. I'm going to give my list the name current projects. I'm giving it the name current projects with no space because that is the best practice. Later on we'll come back and we'll add a space to it. So click create and now we've got our empty list and in the tab on the right of the list tools ribbon we're going to choose list settings. And in list settings, the first thing I'm going to do is go to title, description, and navigation. And I am going to add a space to our current projects list. And then I am going to go to the columns section. And in the columns section, I'm going to click title. Or rather, I'm going to change the title to project name. And then I'm going to require that this column contains information and I'm going to set the enforce unique values to yes and then click OK. In order to enforce unique values we have to index the column. So I'm going to click OK there. So now we have a project name column and a created by and modified by column. But I'm going to add another column called project manager. I'm going to make that a person or group. Require that that contains information. And again, normally in the real world, I would choose from a group of project managers. But since I don't have a group of project managers, I'm just going to allow the all users selection. And then I'm going to click OK. So now I've got a project name, a project manager. But I'm also going to add from existing columns, from existing columns, site columns, I'm going to add from the core task and issue columns, I am going to add the due date column and click OK. So now I've got my project name, my project manager, and my due date column. I'm going to make that due date column required. And then we'll click OK. So now I have my current projects custom list. Now the reason we created this current projects custom list is so that we can add a couple of projects to the list like a SharePoint class. We'll make Krishna S the project manager and the due date is going to be next Monday. And we'll add another project the actual SharePoint implementation. And we'll make Ben the project manager of that project. And that has to happen the Monday following the SharePoint training. So now we have these couple of projects 
And anytime anybody uploads a document to our shared documents library, we want them to add a project name to that document. But also, whenever somebody uploads a resume, we want them to associate that resume with the project. And perhaps later on we add additional lists and libraries. We want the documents loaded into those libraries to also be associated with the project. So instead of having to add these fields to every new list or library that we create, what we can do is create something called a content type. So we are going to go first to site actions and site settings and we're going to choose from the galleries section here we're going to choose um, well we we want to create a site content type but before we can create a content type we need to have site level columns that we can access in that content type so we're first going to go to site columns and create a new site column called project name and we're going to make this project name site column a lookup. And it's going to look its data up from that current projects list that we just created. But first, we're going to categorize our new site column. And I'm going to put it into the Pro Data Man group so that later on when I come back to look for the columns that I've created, I can easily find them in the Pro Data Man group. We're going to require that the project name column contains information, and it's going to get its data from the current projects list and from the project name column but we want to display the project name linked to the actual project so we're going to choose project name linked to item and that way if we click on the name of the project it'll bring up a dialog that shows us the details of that project like the due date and the project manager so we'll click OK there now we've created our new column so we're going to go back to site settings and now we can create our content type so we're going to choose create content type and we're going to call our content type project documents and we are going to choose from the document content types because our project documents are going to be documents. So we'll base them on the document content type. And just like we did with our column, we are going to add this new content type to the Pro Data Man group. That way, when we come back and we have to uh, do some consulting and edit this content type, we can easily find it in the Pro Data Man group. So here we have the content type settings window that looks very similar to the list settings or library settings window where we can change the name, description, and the group for our content type. Uh, in advanced settings, uh, we can enter document templates. So imagine this was a contract document type. If we wanted to use our boilerplate contract as the document template, we could add that here by uploading that template file. But we're not going to do that. The purpose of this demo is to show you how to add a column in a content type. So we're going to leave these as their defaults. And uh, we are going to go and add our column. But notice also that we have the workflow settings. So we can add a workflow to this content type. Uh, in document information panel settings, we can determine what happens uh, when this type of content is chosen. We're going to tell it to always show the document information panel on document open and initial save for this content type. So whenever we create a new document or open a document, it's going to show us the document information panel where we can add data to our columns. Also, we have information management policy settings where we can determine uh, the document retention schedule. We can enable auditing. We can add barcodes. And we can also add human readable labels to our content as it's added to whatever list or library that we associate this content type with. Again, in this demo, we're just going to add the new column to our content type. So we're going to choose under Columns, Add from Existing Site Columns. And so we don't have to look through this entire list here. We are going to choose the Pro Data Man group, which filters it down to just the columns that we've created, in this case, the single column, Project Name, and we're going to add that column. 
Now notice if we add additional content types that, in, that had inherited from this content type, we could add a project name column to this content type, and any content types inheriting from it would now also have a project name column. All right, so we've added our project name column to our content type. Now it's possible that the project has a due date, but also the document that we're uploading that's associated with that project may have a separate due date long before the project is actually due. So let's go ahead and add another column from existing site columns. And again, from the core task and issue columns, we're going to add the due date column. And click OK. Go modify that due date column and make it required. And then we are finished with our content type. So now we want to take that content type that includes those two new columns and potentially workflow and um, file retention schedules, auditing, barcodes, and labels. We want to add that content type to an existing document library. So we'll go to Shared Documents. And the way that we add a content type is by going to the Library tab, or the tab on the right, depending, regardless of whether it's a list or a library, the tab on the right is for changing the settings for the list or library itself. The tab on the left is for changing the settings or adding documents or list items. So here, we want to manipulate the content type. So you can see here we have content types. I can add from existing content types choose from my pro data man group that I created a moment ago and add my project documents content type to the shared documents document library. So now that content type exists in this document library and that added the due date column and the project name column to the existing columns that were already in this library. Now that's the process when content types have already been enabled on an existing document library or list. I'm going to go to the Site Actions menu before I show you what that content type did. I'm going to go to the Site Actions menu and I'm going to add a new document library. We'll just call it Test. Click Create. And I'm going to add the Project Documents content type to this document library as well. But notice this time, there is no content type section here for me to add my content type. I first have to enable the editing of content types. And that's done through the Advanced Settings link. In Advanced Settings, under Content Types, I can choose Allow Management of Content Types, Yes. And notice the template URL grayed out. That's because when we add a content type, it's expecting that will also add the document template like that boilerplate contract that we were talking about a moment ago as part of the content type rather as part of the document library. So we're just going to accept all the defaults here and choose OK. Now we have our content type section. And in the content type section we're going to again choose add from existing content types, filter on our pro data man group, we see our one project documents content type. We add and click OK. So now we go back to our test document library and we add a document a contract. Then it's going to ask us what type of content is this? Is this just a generic document or is it a project document? Notice what happens when I choose project document. SharePoint says, oh, if it's a project document, then I need to know what project this document goes with. SharePoint implementation. I also need to know what date this project is due. Well, this document is due uh, long before the SharePoint implementation is due next Friday. This document, or I'm sorry, next Monday, this document is due this Friday, so we have plenty of time to review before the due date of the project and save. Notice when we go to share documents if we also add a document to that library because we added the content type 
it will ask us what type of content is this. And if it's a project document, then again, we're required to enter the project name and the due date for the project. So this document is associated with the SharePoint class. It also has to be in this Friday, plenty of time for us to collect it and be ready for class on Monday. So that is how you create a content type uh, and add that content type to a list or library.